Good afternoon to you. Let's learn about externalities. And if you look at the word, the word external is inside of the word. So it's going to have uh, that has a very important uh, effect on its meaning, right? So we'll remember that. Uh, now I want you to think about your neighborhood, and there's probably buildings in your neighborhood that perhaps you wish didn't exist, okay? Um, in my neighborhood, it's the folks that don't pull their weeds, folks with the loud barking dogs, and uh, that's what bothers me. So think about something in your neighborhood that you wish wasn't there. Important question in economics. If you won the lottery, how much would you pay to buy that building from its owner, assuming that you couldn't move? And what this question is getting at is how much do you actually value uh, the damage that's done to your neighborhood or, or to your own personal property due to that building's external effects? Okay. And so if the if the val if the number isn't very high, you know, if it's ten dollars or zero dollars, then you're really not bothered by it very much. If it's an extremely high value, if you'd be willing to pay a million dollars and put something else there, then that's a, a much higher uh, value of damage on you. Okay. So this gets into something called market failures. Uh, you know, the market is a fantastic uh, mechanism for for uh, economic development and, and, and trade and such. But sometimes things aren't uh, accounted for and, and that's, that's what uh, market failures are. The markets just don't work properly. Okay? So externalities are an example of that. Externalities are extra effects based on some kind of economic production. An example here are going to be uh, pollution, pollution from a power plant or a factory. And when the product is, is produced in, in that factory or in the power plant, uh, it gives off some kind of byproduct, uh, goes into the air, and it's, you can see it's affecting the health of these two folks here. Right? So here it's the, the price of the, the gas mask, and here it's the, the cost, the medical cost of the asthma or cancer or whatever more extreme uh, problem it is. So we can, we can try to monetize this, and that's something that happens quite a bit in the courts. Um, you can think about your neighbors, right? Um, if you're a good neighbor, uh, you know, it's, that's, that's excellent. I remember when I was in college, though, I had some neighbors that were so loud with a lot of their activities, I felt like I was part of their family. And uh, often these activities took place late at night, um, you know, kind of got the way of some of my studying. It definitely had an effect on me. Okay, so that's an externality there. It's got to be outside the direct exchange. So the the power generated in the power plant is not part of the, is not the externality. It's the byproduct of that power. Right? It's affecting people who are not buying the product, who are not selling the product. Um, and so if you work in that factory and you you know lose a finger, have some kind of workers' comp claim, then that's not really the externality. That's just internalized in the cost. It's got to be something outside. Okay. And they also can be positive. Economists uh, focus on the negative quite a bit um, because these tend to be problems, but it could be some kind of undervalued uh, externality that is positive here. Whoops. Um, so, for example, if you lived near um, some kind of landmark that people really liked to see and you ran a business there, that would increase your customers and you aren't necessarily paying for it. Now, sometimes that's internalized in the property costs or property uh, values or property tax, something like that, but not, not always, right? So there, there can be uh, positive benefits, positive externalities, okay? And again, this is a marketplace failure, okay? So, um, you know, it's basically you've got companies not paying for additional costs they're imposing on other folks, or you've got companies or consumers benefiting from some benefit that they didn't pay for either, okay? There's a great great example of this in an early Simpsons episode where Bart catches a three-eyed fish out of a creek, and um, it turns out Mr. Burns' factory has polluted that creek. Okay, so it's a good wildlife example, right? If if a firm is uh, is causing some kind of pollution, uh, it affects the wildlife, can affect hunters or fishermen, uh, and uh, so that's a good example there. I, I couldn't find a, a closed caption version of this, so sorry. Uh, now, here's a map of uh, the southern and midtown Tucson area. Take a look at it. What externalities do we see here? First one that's pretty obvious here is the airport. The airport causes a lot of noise pollution around the airport. Uh, you know, there's often some lights up there. 
uh, but it's really the noise from the airplanes, right? And they try to solve the problem by if they change the flight route, they may uh, install new windows on some of the neighborhoods down here in this area. Okay, so that's the that's the externality. You taking an airplane trip is not the part of the externality. It's the noise coming from the airplane that's part of the externality. The other one is going to be uh, you know the Air Force Base is a similar noise issue. Uh, I-10 and I-19, so our freeways here definitely cause externalities, and that's the pollution from the cars. Whether or not you drive a car, uh, ride a bike, whatever, you you are negatively affected by everybody who drives a car on that uh, freeway. Now we, we tax the gas, and we'll get into that later, uh, to try to solve that externality, but that there there is still an external effect there. There's a couple of positive externalities too. So Star Pass Golf Course, very beautiful, Reed Park, uh, very historic part of Tucson. And so these, uh, these two areas tend to have positive externalities. The area around uh, those areas, property values seem to be a little bit higher. Uh, and so there's that additional benefits as a positive externality. And there's probably more. Uh, and you can think specifically about your neighborhood or the place, the place that you live or do business. So this is a good question. Would we want to live next to the airport? Well, not really because of the noise um, <clears throat> externality there. Uh, but a different question, would you want to open a business next to the airport? And the answer here is yes. You want to uh, sell products to people with an, a more inelastic demand, right? And air travelers tend to be wealthier because they're flying on airplanes. They may be business travelers. They're away from their home, so they lack the ability to cook their own food. Uh, and they face a more inelastic demand when they're trying to buy goods and services near the airport. So I definitely want to sell things near the airport. Okay. This is a, a U of A example. Uh, could could refer also to Pima West too. Um, this is from 2009. Uh, neighbors mobilize against many dorms. So in the university area, and if you uh, have looked into this problem at all, it's, it's a great um, issue here. It says demand for student housing exceeds supply by 2,500 to 5,000 beds. So there's there's more people that want to stay in the U of A area than there is uh, places for them. So firms are building new uh, places for them to live, which is smart. Uh, and it does come with an externality, right? Students, uh, some students, not all students, in fact, it's probably more of a minority, uh, throw loud parties, uh, come and go at uh, non-business-like hours. And this causes a negative externality uh, to some of the homeowners around there. Okay, and there's a there's a clip in um, in this week's uh, clips that also shows that problem and a possible solution. So the landlord has a has a solution. Uh, I'd be interested to see what you think of that. Uh, out in the ocean, in a bigger scale, uh, there's another clip talking about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Essentially, uh, plastic products, especially water bottles, are ending up in the ocean. They don't bio. They take a really long time to biodegrade. Uh, it's breaking it down into smaller pieces. The fish and the birds are eating it. It's a problem. Uh, it's especially more of a problem now that uh, we eat some of that fish, so we're getting our own externality back into us. So it's not just a problem out in the middle of the ocean, um, but we see the externality there uh, in that. This is uh, a map of. I guess there's five of these. I shouldn't be laughing. Um, but uh, such a problem now that we have all of these um, uh, floating garbage dumps out in the middle of the ocean. Okay, and uh, in the next video I'll do, uh, we'll graph this. We'll graph this problem.